Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to Rich Reviews and today you join us at a workshop for the installation of the Forza exhaust valve controller and we're not only doing it on my car, we're doing it on two 458s, so two for the benefit of one. So full disclosure, I've been provisioned with a Forza valve controller in exchange for providing a video to advertise the company. So what we're going to try and do first of all on both cars is loosen off and remove the top of the air filter. Once we remove the top of the air filter, we'll loosen off the bolts that actually um, retain the bottom of the air filter unit, but we won't actually remove the air filter unit, we'll move it to the side. That should hopefully uh, give us enough space to be able to gain access to the top of the valves and to the cables that connect to the top of the valves. Um, and then to interconnect the Forza controller unit, uh, in effect to interface the Forza controller unit with those cables so that, so that we're connecting one of the cables to the Forza controller unit and it sends the, sends the messages to the valve unit to control it. We're also going to remove this side section of the car uh, in a, the engine compartment panel, the left engine compartment panel, so that we can gain access to install the Forza control unit actually behind here. So it will keep it warm, dry and away from damp. The Forza control unit itself is not waterproof, but the cabling is. So you have to make sure that you install the Forza control unit in a dry place that is, that is preferably damp free. If you have the Forza control unit installed around the back of the rear bumper, then if the car's taken out in the rain, it, can gain ac it gains access to damp and, and water, etc., and it can damage the unit. So you have to be very careful with that. So this is a working workshop. Um, for coaches and I actually used these coaches when I was a kid for traveling to and from school so it's a working workshop so you can hear a lot of sounds in the background but hopefully you won't pick too much of it up because we're using a dedicated mic and the mic's pretty good but you will hear some noises in the background it's not us making any weird sounds it's just it's a it's a working workshop and they're still working so it is what it is it's great that we can use this area so far is we've tried to find a location for the Forza controller unit that's the actual controlling unit that actually sends a signal down um, to the valves via the remote control so you use a remote control it actuates the Forza controller unit which I've positioned here via Wi-Fi you can see the aerial here on the Forza controller unit and through the, via these cables that will connect to these to these connectors it will then control the valves so you, you control it by remote control so the first thing, which has taken quite a while, is removing this side engine panel so that we can gain access behind it to see where we can locate the, the Forza controller unit. That's a key aspect because you want to keep it away from direct heat, uh, but away from damp and moisture. So we've managed that. The panel, much like this one, will just fit in front of that and then we're going to route the cables. How I've connected it is I've used tie clips connected to the main wiring loom. And you've got to be careful that the controller unit is located away from this hinging mechanism. This is the, the like the tonneau cover that covers up the hard top and this lifts up when you actuate the roof. So this is all hinged here. So you've got to make sure that you keep the Forza unit away from this hinging mechanism because obviously this is moving and you don't want it banging into the Forza controller unit and you'd, obviously you don't want the, the Forza controller unit blocking movement of the hinge mechanism. So that's a very good locating point. When we put the side panel back on again, it fully covers this unit. It's away from any direct heat. You've got the heat shields there for, you've got the heat shields there for the exhaust. It's away from that. It'll have the panel behind it, which will guard it away from any heat from there and we'll be able to run the cables along the existing wiring loom down through and to the valve units. 
So the next stage is to loosen off and remove the top air filter cover. Once we remove the top air filter cover, then we'll loosen off the, the fitment, the, the, we'll, lo we'll loosen off the locating bolts or the locating fixings um, for the bottom of the air, the air filter cover. That should then provide us access to be able to move the air filter cover to the side slightly, which will give us access to the cables that attach to the valves, which are just down there. It's almost like so near, but yet so far. You can see the actual cables down there, but you can't get your hand through there to reach to them. So once we've got this loosened off and moved to one side, we should then be able to gain access to the cables and then we'll connect the cables through and we'll run the cables across the, the, main, the cross member in front there and round and along, across, along the, the existing wiring loom that exists there. Um, and that existing wiring loom obviously is the one that's existing there to go to the valve controller units. I'll explain more when we actually plug in the cables, I'll go through and I'll explain how we actually connect the cables in then when we get to that stage. I have to put my glasses on as well <laughs> because uh, being at the age I am, blind as a bat. Not really that bad, but there you go. So the reason why I've put this masking tape here um, is because when you loosen off and remove this top part, you have to shift it around quite a bit and you have to pull it back. And I don't want to damage the paintwork, so I put masking tape there so that if this should knock into the side panels here, it's not going to chip any paint off, so it should protect it. So a bit of preventative mechanism there. It's worth spending a little time preparing um, for the work that you're performing so to make sure you don't actually damage the car. So what we're doing here is we're moving the top of the air filter cover. So we've disconnected the air filter to the throttle body. So this is the throttle bodies here. In effect, that meters the air. In effect, they meter the air that's going into the, into the plenum chambers, which goes into the top of the engine. Obviously, it needs air to mix with the fuel. Uh, fuel is direct injection on these cars. Um, and this gives, gives us access now to, as you can see, the, the air filter is nice and clean. You know, you, you, you've got to wonder whether these cars really need to be serviced as regularly as they are, but um, there you go. I mean, this is due for service in, what, six months' time, and the air filter is spotlessly clean. So there's locating nuts down here, which locate the bottom of the air filter housing um, to the bodywork of the car, to the chassis of the car. So we're going to loosen those off, or we're going to remove the nuts. I'm going to lift off the bottom of the air filter housing from the fixings um, so we can then swivel the air filter housing left and right and gain access to the to the exhaust valves and gain access to the wiring loom that connects to the exhaust valves so that we can interface the Forza controller with those exhaust valves wiring loom. So for some reason to locate this these this air filter housing they fitted a large washer and a small washer um, and a nut so it's very fiddly because one thing you want to make sure is you do not drop these washers or any nuts or bolts down into the engine compartment we're trying to avoid removing the rear diffuser but if you drop these down definitely you've got to remove the rear diffuser because then you've got to gain access um, to be able to you know gain access to the to the washers etc or the bits and pieces you might have dropped so we try and avoid to uh, remove the rear diffuser at the moment <laughs> So we, we're now trying to route the cable through to, to the valve controllers, the new cable for, for the Forza controller unit. And the, the, the first problem was to disconnect the existing cables from the, from, the, from the exhaust solenoid valves. To be able to do that, we've had to take the rear diffuser off, um, raise the car up, um, raise the car up, take the rear diffuser off, and then um, use some snipe nose pliers to actually pull the wires on the cable so I can pull the cables off the top. Now, we're, now what we're going to do is drop the car back down again and try and route the cables through from the top um, and be able to join the cables through. Ideally what you need to do is take the air filter box directly out of the car but to do that because you've got the solenoid valves connected to the bottom of the of the air filter box you really need to detach those because they're connected through pipes to the actual valve controllers so you can only lift the air filter box out so much you can't lift it all out unless you disconnect the bracket or take away the bracket that can that holds the valves to the underneath of the air filter box 
that's what I've tried to do, but I can't gain access underneath through, the, through, this, through this section because the exhaust is blocking my arm and, you, and it's too high up. You can't really gain access and you can't move the air filter box out of the way enough because you just cannot see. It's just uh, a, a bit of a pain in the ass, really. So I'm going to try and route the cable through the top because we've, ma we've managed to be able to loosen the air filter box enough to move it to, to the side a little bit. Um, but it's just a nightmare trying to route the cable and we're going to have to try and tie clip the cable along the existing wiring loom there, which is really problematic as well. Um, so the saga goes on. We'll continue and, and uh, get the wire routed somehow. So where we've got to now is we've managed to fit the cabling um, to the valve solenoid and uh, to the existing ECU wiring loom as well, because you have to connect the Forza controller to the solenoids and to the existing ECU wiring. So you're interfacing in effect in series with the existing system. So instead of the ECU taking control, the Forza takes control. But if you switch the Forza into ECU mode, um, in other words, if you switch it back to normal mode, then the actual ECU operational will take place as normal. So to be able to do that, you have to have it in, in series with the actual wiring, the existing wiring loom. We've now done that. We've connected the valve controllers up to the Forza controller unit, um, and we've tied clipped the or tied clipped the cabling all the way along the cross member section. It was a real pain in the backside because the only way we could do that without taking the rear bumper off was to have the air filter lower box section um, up as loose as we could possibly get it, and it was a nightmare, absolute nightmare, to get my hands in there to tie clip it, to tie clip the wiring round. And then it has been absolute hell to fix the, the rubber boots back on the side of the air filter box. So we're just finishing off now. So we've now got to put the air filter top cover on, uh, connect it to the, to the throttle bodies. Um, and then uh, we're pretty much um, there to go. We've just got to raise the car up then, put the rear diffuser back on and we're done. I've checked through the Forza unit to make sure that the light does come up. So when you switch ignition on and the light comes up on the Forza unit, so that's fine. That does work. So it shows that it's interconnected with the, um, with the, with the 458 wiring loom and it's taking power. So it should function OK. Um, but we won't know fully until we've got the air filter, bo air filter box back on again. I can fire it up and then check. So you'll join us when we have the air filter box on and we'll fire it up and hopefully everything will be okay. So we've got the car back together again. We've got the air filter box back in. We've got the air filter lid back in. We've connected the throttle bodies back up. Um, all the Forza controller unit is all wired in, cable tied in nicely, um, all, all hidden away. And the, all the cabling runs along the natural route of the 458 cabling. So it's not impinging anything and it's running the natural route of the wiring loom that was designed into the 458. So that is the proper way to, to put third party wiring and you always, you always run and trace alongside the, the standard wiring loom because they put the wiring loom in those places for a reason to keep it safe. So we're just going to fire it up now and try it. Fingers crossed. So we're just finishing off now. As you can see, the Forza controller works fantastically well. So the eight hours wasn't all in vain. We're now going to put the rear diffuser back on. We've got the car back up. What we've noticed as well is that there's a date just inside. I don't think you're going to be able to get it on camera, but there's a date just inside here that says the 29th of June, 2015, ISSA. I assume ISSA may be the initials of the person who put the car together or did that panel. 
but that's when the car was built, the, 20, 20, the 29th of June, 2015, and of course registered 2015, and uh, actually released it as, a September, as a September build. So we've just fitted the rear diffuser back on the car, we fit the engine side panel back on. The Forza valve controller is actually fitted behind this engine panel here on the left hand side. As you can see, it's hidden, so nicely secure. All the cabling, as I detailed before, is wired around um, alongside the existing wiring loom, so all nice and safe and as per OEM design with regards to the location of wiring. The wiring for the Forza control unit is actually waterproof, so that's great. The Forza controller itself is not waterproof, hence why it's behind in a, in a dry area in the engine bay, which is the best location for the unit. Shouldn't really be located lower down, especially if the car's going out in, in, weather, in all sorts of weather, etc., in the rain and such like. Um, but uh, we've got the job done. <laughs> So we're back at good old Silbury Hill again. Um, we needed some time to take the car out to actually give you some footage of the different configuration states of using the Forza valve controller. Clearly because we finished um, working on the car at 2 a.m. in the morning, we couldn't really do that. You know, um, We were in a built up area. We couldn't take the car out and scream the engine and, and uh, we couldn't take the car out and have the exhaust loud in that area. Um, we provided some night footage as you can see but um, we couldn't provide you a lot of footage so we've taken the car out today we've got some good footage of the exhaust and um, with it with it starting um, with it starting in cold start with the valves open so it's, it's a pretty cool device as you can imagine that's why a lot of people use the Forza valve controllers on their supercars the Forza controller is pretty much the the valve controller of choice now I wanted to talk you through some of the configuration issues that we had and our approach to installing it for our 458 um, you know how we would change that around how we would do it with benefit of hindsight um, for the spider um, and the general approach that we that we had to take to install the Forza valve controller on our 458 now we know there's various different approaches out there for installing to the 458 um, some cars you can shift the air filter around to be able to gain access to the valves some 458s you have to take off the rear bumper and I wanted to go through you the, those different options with you with ours we purposely didn't remove the rear bumper because we wanted to try the easiest approach for our viewers which would be taking the air filter box off um, taking the top of the air filter box off, unbolting the bottom of the air, the air filter box, shifting it around to provide access to the valves because that would be the easier option for our viewers. We actually managed to install it that way but it took us a long time and it's not necessarily a preferred route. Now what we did was we loosened off the air filter lid, loosened off the air filter box, we shifted and lifted and maneuvered around the lower air filter tray um, 
In doing so, we had to remove the side rubber bellows, which attack, attach by large, uh, which are attached to the air filter box by via large Jubilee clips. Um, and we also removed the side engine compartment, um, the side engine compartment panel, so as we could so we could affix the the valve controller unit underneath here behind the back. That was fine. We, we situated that first of all so that we knew exactly um, the wire lengths that we would need. Um, but we couldn't remove the pre-existing wiring loom connectors to the actual valve solenoids um, because even though you're supposed to be able to press in the wire clips to, to deform the clips, to be able to enable you to pull the clips off the, the valve solenoids, you can't actually do that. It just doesn't work. You've got to pull out the wire clips. Now, the only way we could do that using this approach was to raise the car up and to remove the diffuser. So to gain access, just to be able to pull those wire clips, to be able to take off the existing wire loom off the valve solenoids, we had to remove all the bottom diffuser, which isn't too much of a task, um, and gain access that way, use some snipe nose pliers, pull off the wires, the wire clips totally, so that then we could pull off the plugs off the, off the valve solenoids and then interconnect the wiring loom. Now we interconnected the wire loom through here from this side. So we had the, the air filter box moved to the side multiple ways to try and gain access. We only had a little bit of room available down here. So I managed to squeeze my hands down, um, gain access and plug in the, the wiring loom as required. So obviously you, you've got two connectors. You plug one connector to the valve solenoid and one connector um, to the to the ECU of the wiring loom for the Forza valve controller. You do that on both sides. So in effect, the Forza valve controller is acting in series with the pre-existing 458 wiring. And that enables it then to take the ECU readings through into the box. And then depending on how you configure the Forza valve controller, depends on how it operates. After, we'd, after I'd connected the wiring loom in, I managed to squeeze my hands down there and managed to cable the wiring along the pre-existing wiring loom. And thankfully we didn't need the extension cables. So that was a very good thing that we didn't have to use the extension cables. Now, this is a, point, this is a good point to note. Um, people with a 458 Spider, you don't need the extension cables, even if you're situating the Forza valve controller behind the left engine panel uh, or behind the right engine panel, but you're not really gonna get it behind there. That's the best place to fit it, as, as you can see from the, our installation and routing the cables all the way around the pre-existing wiring loom. It's always important to run the cables along the pre-existing wiring loom. Well, why is that? Well, Ferrari knew what they were doing. They, they put the wiring in the, in the particular locations they did because that was a good place to put it, to keep it away from heat from the exhaust, vital, and to keep it away from moisture. Now, some people have fitted the falls of valve controllers behind this section. Inside, within the bumper section, there is a cavity there um, near where the reversing camera is. So down here, down here in this section, it is an area. If you're driving the car during damp conditions and during rain, it could get moisture and it could get dampness. Also, you've got the exhaust quite close there. If you've got, a, 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 if you've got an aftermarket exhaust on there, maybe it'd be a different configura configuration, but you have got the interconnecting pipes coming in and it's quite close to that area. I wouldn't recommend that because you've got to try and keep these force of valve controller away from heat. If you've got a lot of um, changing in heat with, with electronic components, then the, the consistent heating up, cooling down, heating up, cooling down can actually fracture solder joints. So it's not a great idea to do that. And obviously damp around electronics is a very bad thing, um, which, is, which is fairly obvious. Um, so definitely the, the placement in a 4th of 8 Spider is better, in my opinion, behind the left-hand panel. Um, which is where ours is situated and um, behind here. Now, removing the rear diffuser did provide other benefits as well. It wasn't just the fact that enabled you to, or enabled us to be able to pull the wire clips out of the back of the, of the clips, of the back of the connectors that go onto the valve solenoids. It also provided the ability to pull one of the, one of the, um, one of the steel pipes. I think it's steel, it probably is aluminium actually. It allowed us to pull one of the vacuum pipes, which is connected and clipped into the side out of its clip to provide more length in that pipe so that when we lifted the, the air filter box up, it provided a little bit more height, which gave us just that little bit more access here. The access was really reduced. 
And of course, because we were, I was working down here all the time to run the cables, unfortunately, we weren't able to provide you any footage of that because you just can't get the, you can't get the camera in there to see it. You would have seen nothing. It would have just been blackness. And even if we just on light in there, you just can't see it. You just can't see it. I had such a small slit down there moving this forwards and backwards. You just wouldn't have been able to see me cabling it. So unfortunately, we, didn't, we weren't able to provide you any footage of me actually cabling it in. Obviously, once we were putting it all back together again, um, I raised the car up again on the ramp and I pushed that, that pipe back in again into its clip to put its proper axis in after I fitted the, the base air filter box back in. Okay, so that's how we installed it. The difficulties we had were, as you probably can imagine, reduced access. It was a nightmare installing the cables down through this reduced access area down here. Also, um, as I said, we had problems um, where we had to pull the, the actual proper metal clips, spring clips, out of the plugs that connect onto the valve solenoids. You, we weren't able to deform them. I believe Ferrari say that you should be able to push in the top of these clips to be able to deform the clips and then pull the plugs off. It just doesn't work. You've got to get snipe nose pliers onto those clips. You've got to pull the metal clips right out. Um, and then you pull the plugs off and then you've got to put those metal clips back in again. Now remember, I couldn't gain access to that to do that down here. I just didn't have enough room to put snipe nose pliers down there and to pull it off to, to get that leverage. So that had to be done underneath. Now that height, the valve solenoids are about here in height wise with regards to where the rear, the rear, the bottom end of the car is. And you're reaching through, you've got the exhaust pipes here. So you're reaching through, trying to gain access to pull these clips off far from ideal and you can't cable it through from underneath not with the standard exhaust system you just can't cable it there you've got to cable it from the top if you're using that approach so big difficulty there um, hence why we had to go through the bottom end and the rear diffuser so that that approach took us circa you know realistically because we did some filming as well etc would have taken us around seven hours to do all of that but it enabled us to give you this important advice, you know, that, you know, if from a point of recommendation, point of view of installing it, yes, you can do it that way. Would you want to? No. So my conclusions, the Forza Valve Controller, fantastic system. You've got the control system here, the remote control system here. In effect, if you've got a 458, then the pre-configured state of the 458 is if you leave it with the jumper settings on the Forza Valve controller so that it uses the ECU um, in its default state, so you use the default jumper set, you've got A, which will be valves closed, B is valves open. So it's a cool little remote control and it works really, really well and it's got a good range. So fantastic device, the Forza Valve controller. The pain in the ass is fitting the system to a spider. <laughs> now, how would I do it in hindsight? remove the rear bumper. Remo removing the rear bumper would take around two hours if you're being very, very careful. So how would you remove the rear bumper? Now, I haven't actually removed the rear bumper, but I've done a lot of research, so I've got a pretty good idea how you do it. You remove the rear wheels. This is, you have to do this operation on both sides. So you remove the rear wheel, you remove the rear diffuser. There's certain bolts you have to undo at the back from the rear diffuser, which, which come through at the back here. Um, you remove the rear wheel arches. Then once you've removed the rear wheel arches, you unbolt the rear lights. That then provides you access to a hidden bolt around this area, which is hidden by the rear light. You undo that bolt, that enables then the rear bumper to unclip. Now the rear bumper is clipped on. I've got to try and think where I am now. The rear bumper is clipped on around here. So there's little clips in there um, that, that you've got to lift up the bumper and unhook it and then it all comes away. Now, obviously, when you take the bumper off, you've got to be very careful, put it on something soft so you're not going to damage the paper, the, so you're not going to damage the paintwork. Once you've got the rear bumper off, you've got full access. And then when you've got the rear bumper off, you can see what a pain in the ass it is with where the valves are situated. The valve solenoids, which control the valves, the valves are connected to the exhaust pipes, um, and there the valves actually change and switch the open and close and change the actual um, sections of, of pipework that are incorporated into the exhaust that allow the emissions to come out of the car. Um, but the actual valve solenoids, the solenoids control the valves um, via pipework from the ECU system and, and obviously now from the Forza valve controller. 
the valve solenoids are bolted via a bracket to the underneath of the air filter. Now, this limitation in space is mainly for the 458 Spider. With the 458 Spider, you've only got a small compartment here on this left-hand engine bay to put in the valve controller. Now, you've got plenty enough room to put in the Forza controller, but the problem is you, you can't go deep back. Why can't you? Well, because you've got all the roof mechanism here for the folding roof. All the roof mechanism is behind here. On an Italia, you can go all the way back here. This is why on the Italia, you probably will need the extension cables because you're able to fit the Forza valve controller really further up to the left-hand side. And then you'd have to have a need, obviously, to run a, a longer cables to the back. So you would need the extension cables for that. Um, but on the, on the Spider, you just don't have all that room. Now, because on the Spider, everything is pushed back further because you've got all the, all the fitments and, and uh, motors and hinges, etc., for the folding roof, it means it pushes everything back to further to the back of the car, which means you have less space if you loosen the, the air filter box. On the Italia, if you loosen the air filter box, you have a lot more space. So you'd probably be okay using this approach that I use on an Italia, probably be a lot easier. But my conclusion, my, but my concluding remarks are for the Spider, definitely remove the rear bumper. So that's it guys. Um, I, I know I've waffled on a bit there, but I wanted to provide as much information to you as possible. And hopefully we've been installing it again for, to another spider by removing the rear bumper. Just want to emphasize again, it is a really cool unit. And um, one of the benefits that we've got as well that I just want to quickly show you um, is, is some footage of the car starting and the sound of the car, because this is the most important thing at the end of the day. Now, my car is configured in standard ECU mode. What happens is you start the car, the valves are automatically open, and then the, there's, there's a depression in the manifold which causes a vacuum on the pipes, which then close the valves after about three to five seconds. That's the normal process. But a cool thing you can do um, is you can either configure the valve controller unit so that the valves are open all the time. You change a jumper setting so that the valves are open all the time in its default state, and then you close them via the unit. But I wanted mine to still function in the same way as the standard ECU if I hadn't used the Forza valve controller settings. So what I've realized is you can turn the ignition on, you can then press the button on the Forza valve controller remote. Just wait for my webcam to change its statement uh, to stop talking. Um, and then you can press button B on the Forza Valve Controller remote. Because the ignition is on, it then switches the valves in, or it switches the, the latch within the Forza Valve Controller to tell the valves to stay open when I start it. So when I start it, you'll hear it start fully cold start and the valves won't close, which is pretty cool. And then of course you can just drive off in that condition. <laughs> So now I'm going to close the valves, press button A. Now I'm going to open the valves again, listen to the difference. tick over, valves open, valves closed, valves open, valves closed. You can see there's a massive difference, there's a big big difference. One of the things you also get, um, which you'll probably notice from the driving footage we've provided, is that when the car's on lower lower revs and when you're sort of changing gear with lower revs when the valves wouldn't normally be open if you're using the ECU configuration there is some burbles there, there is some burbles that's sort of hidden by the ECU configuration by not using something like a Forza valve controller to have the, the, the valves open when a car's doing lower revs 
yes, you could put it into race mode and have the valves open sooner, but you still don't have the valves open at a lower RPM, the real lower RPM. And there's some hidden burbles that you do get, even with the later cars. I know that with the early cars, you get, you get some additional burbles on liftoff, etc. Um, for the 2010 and 2011 cars, but you still do get some of that in the 2015 cars, which is hidden by the ECU configuration. So the Forza Valve controller unleashes those that capability for you to hear it, um, because obviously you're listening to it throughout the whole valve range with the valves open, so that's pretty cool. So we're gonna close out the video now with the Forza controller in its default best figured state with the valves open. I really recommend the Forza controller unit. It's a really cool unit and is the best best known one in the marketplace really it's pretty much become the industry standard valve controller for these cars thanks a lot for watching guys if you enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up give it a like hopefully you'll be able to join us in the future when we're installing the Forza valve controller to another 458 spider this time we're moving the rear bumper thanks a lot guys and we'll catch you in the next video